Hi guys, it's Rob from East Coast Sailing. Today I'm going to show you how to remove and how to rebuild your gory folding propeller. Now you probably think that this unit's brand new, but trust me, it's 19 years old, but it didn't always look like this. And if you've got one of the dreaded guy pins with damaged threads, don't worry, I've got you covered. I went to a local engineering shop and managed to get a new guy pin made up and the hub itself bored out to a slightly bigger size. So that only cost 150 pounds as opposed to buying a new prop, which was 2,700 pounds. I've also uncovered a lot of issues with this particular propeller. It started off just needing two anodes changed on the hub as well as the rear. However, this soon grew legs. Someone's clearly worked in this unit who didn't know what they were doing because each propeller has a number on it as well as the guy pin and they have to go back on specific locations. The number three guide pin needs to go on the number three hub with the number three propeller. Now when I got to one of the guide pins there was a large blob of Loctite and whenever you see that in all my engineering experience you realise someone's probably damaged the guide pins or threads and that was the case on this propeller. I started removing what I thought was the shaft anode and I soon realised it was actually connected to the gory propeller hub. Now bear in mind I only bought this boat six months ago and it was the first time that I physically saw the boat out of the water myself so I had no idea who made this propeller and I had no information on it. The propeller was so badly corroded you couldn't see any of the markings that are actually inscribed onto the propeller blades as well as the hub. I took a few measurements of the anode, especially the width, and found out it was about 36 millimeters wide. After searching the dimensions online, the name Gory kept coming up. I could see it was a three blade prop and the radius was 8.25 inches. To get the diameter, we doubled that and luckily they had a 16 and a half inch diameter prop online. After I took the propeller off and cleaned it all up, we could see that it was a 16 and a half inch prop with a 12 inch pitch blade with three propellers with a right hand drive. Due to the amount of jobs, I thought it was best to remove the propeller and get it in the garage. So I wire brushed the seam. I shocked it with a hammer to get rid of the joint. And I also heated up the collar with a blowtorch to expand it just to help ease it off with the wrench. So I propped some wood under the propeller to stop it rotating. So we're gonna turn it around anti-clockwise and I've got one of these adjustable spanners that I use on some of my cars here. And I've also got one of these bars that I'm gonna slip over the end if it's getting a little bit tough. We're not gonna try and you know force it off because otherwise we're gonna break something or possibly end up bending the shaft. Oh, that was easy. <laughs> that was it, that's probably the easiest job I've ever done on a boat. Right, so we got the gory propeller blade back in the garage. We're working in a nice clean environment and we're gonna to start to remove these individual propeller blades. Now, before I go removing the locking bolt and the guide pin, you must remember to remove this anode bolt first. If you don't do that, there's a little thread at the end of this bolt that will round off. I created this illustration to show you how the locking bolt locks into all three guide pins. So if you try removing the guide pin without removing the locking bolt, you will damage the threads on the hub as well as the guide pins. I'm just removing the rear anode bolt. So that's all that's left of that anode that was put on five months ago, which is not good. And you can see the rear anode bolt has lots of serrations where the guide pins probably weren't lined up exactly, which has scored the shaft when it's been screwed in. I'm removing the guide pin locking bolt. The guide pin can be safely removed, which will release the propeller from the hub. Now you can see one of the actual guy pins with the recess at the end where the locking bolt actually sits into. It's almost like a really heavy scaling that's uh, covering this. I don't know if it's electrolysis or um, just oxidization, but it seems to be quite thick. It's almost like a stony texture. So I'm gonna go quite light on the, uh, the brush here. It is a bronze brush. I used a metal polisher and different compounds to cut through all the oxidization. I started with a brown heavy cutting compound to remove any deep scratches and moved all the way up to a fine compound which got it to a mirror like finish. Don't get too aggressive with the polishing and make sure the movements are nice and smooth and you're not working any of the edges for too long. And now you can see the before and after. Gory's official advice to cleaning the propeller as well as the blades is to put it into a bucket containing vinaigrette acid and leave it overnight until the propeller is clean. 
They also state by having one millimeter of growth on the propeller blades, you'll lose 12% of its efficiency, so keep the propeller clean. There should be rubber propeller blade stops, and what they do is they protect the blades from hitting the hub when the engine is put into drive and the blades swing out under centrifugal force. Now over time, if there's no rubber to protect the hub, those guide pins that are holding the propeller blades in could eventually shear just due to metal fatigue and you could potentially lose one of your propellers when you're going along under engine. So there's lots of little difficult to reach bits. So I'm just getting this metal hook tool and just scraping away some of the scale build up and then I've just followed it over with a uh, brass, 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 too tired. That was when you do DIY on a school night. Another really important part to remember is when you take the blades out, make sure you number them and keep the locking bolts and the guide pins together with that blade because that has to go back into the exact same hub because they've got a wear pattern and they've actually been machined. Little did I know that every guide pin, propeller and propeller blade hub had a number imprinted on it already. It was just so corroded I couldn't see it. After polishing the propeller blades in the hub, it was time to deal with the damaged threads on the guide pin as well as the hub. There were five different options of trying to fix the propeller. I tried to inquire about a new guide pin, but Gory don't actually sell that because it has to be machined specifically to the hub. I then inquired about a new propeller and that came back at £2,700. I then inquired about buying just the hub as well as three new guide pins and they quoted £1,650. Option 4 was just bodging it and using lots of Loctite but that didn't sit well with me with the propeller spilling around at 3,500 RPMs. I wouldn't fancy a propeller blade going through the bottom of the boat. The last option being the most cost effective of having a new guide pin manufactured with an increased thread size in the end as well as reboring the thread hub out to a slightly increased diameter from an M10 to an M11. I went to visit Charlie, the proud owner of Automill Engineering LTD based in Colchester, Cyril's industrial estate. Now Charlie can make anything out of anything and the only limitation is your budget as well as your imagination. So I sent him all these pictures to explain what I needed doing. I brought my box of spare parts down to Charlie and he began to work his magic taking measurements and milling a new guy pin out of 316 stainless steel. I asked Charlie if he could pose for an action shot and the belt sander's not even on. And if you require Charlie's services, make sure you tell him Mad Rob sent you. So we've got the new pin back from Automill and it looks brilliant. You can see that the end of the thread has been taken up from a M10 to an M11, I believe. Yes, yeah, so it's one millimeter bigger, but he's also machined out the recess for the locking bolt there. I bought the serviceable parts from two companies, Celeti Marine, which is the UK Gory authorised dealer, as well as Anos Direct, because they had the best prices on most products. A quick run through of all the costs to date. So the guide pin and machine work was £150. The rear anode and buffer stops were £78. The hub anode was £71. The shims and bushings were £30. The Loctite Blue for 243 was £10, coming to a total of £339. So that saves you £2,361 if we were to buy a new propeller. You can also buy optional tools, but you might have these in the bottom of your bilge, which I found after buying the tools from Celeti Marine, which is a bit of a waste. I'm just going to pop the stops in there. These literally just push into that little uh, recess there. I'm just going to bed these in as well to make sure they're properly seated by uh, putting something smooth. It's not going to damage this. I'm just giving a little tap in. They're all bedded in nicely now. I did buy a selection of new bushings just because I didn't know how warm that was. So I've just gone for something ever slightly thicker or it, in fact that actually looks like the same size and doesn't look like there's much difference in it at all. Not unless there's a thicker bushing. I don't think there is. Well, that one could be. I think the 11 is ever so, yeah. <clears throat> so this bushing goes on there and it sits just below the uh, drive pinion gear there. And you can see that I'm just gonna uprate that slightly because over time this will wear away, get slightly thinner, and then you'll have slight excessive play in the propeller blades. We don't want that happening. So we're gonna put the thicker washer in, make a bit of cover of grease. Be generous with it. down there. And then we're going to put the gear pinion back on. And now it's time to put the propeller blades back. So we've got the number one propeller blade there with the marking number one. We've got the number one hub there. 
and this is the new pin that was made up for the number one propeller blade hub. Use a good dollop of marine grease all over the propeller blades where the two mating surfaces will meet. Apply a liberal covering of Loctite all over the guide pin threads on the end and make sure the threads are clean. I don't have to worry because this is a new guide pin that's been manufactured. I put some marine grease over the guide pin as the propeller blades will pivot around this. Bolt the guide pin in until the recess of the guide pin matches the guide pin recess perfectly. If that isn't aligned, the locking bolt will not be able to sit flush. Apply some Loctite on the locking bolt and make sure the recess is clean from any grease. Apply some more Loctite to the anode bolt which is also the guide pin locking bolt and place the corner of the anode that has a recess over the dowel which is on the hub. Tighten the bolt firmly until there's no play on the anode between the hub. And that completed the restoration of the propeller. However, I had a shocking surprise when I removed the drive shaft and found loads of pitting. Unfortunately, the drive shaft had to be replaced at a cost of over £650 because there was deep scratches and ravines exactly where the cutlass bearing and the stern seal was. I will cover the drive shaft as well as the cutlass bearing and stern seal in a separate video. To remove the propeller hub from the drive shaft, undo the three Allen key locking bolts which hold the nut of the drive shaft in position, then remove the drive shaft holding nut out and then insert the gory pulling tool and then start winding in the bolt which will eventually eject the drive shaft from the propeller hub. Grease the shaft nut threads but don't get any grease on the tapered section of the drive shaft as this is a dry fit with the hub. Slide the hub onto the drive shaft with the recess of the hub facing the keyway. Thread on the drive shaft nut and torque that down to specification. Check the description as well as the manual as there's different torque settings but mine was 57 newton meters. You will need a very large engineering vise to hold the hub in position while you torque that down to specification as it's pretty high. I had to re-drill out the shaft nut recesses for the allen key locking bolts as they didn't quite align when I put them on the new drive shaft. Add Loctite to the allen key locking bolts for the shaft nut and tighten the allen key bolts down firmly so they're a nice snug fit and wipe away any excess Loctite. Lightly grease the jacket threads and screw on the jacket and tighten it down until you can see one of the locking bolt holes align with one of the threads. is nearly ready to install into the boat it's just the hub anodes that need to be installed as well as the jacket locking nuts and guess what more lock tights needed for those last three bolts when I offered up the hub anode it didn't fit very well so I had to use a hammer just to bend it slightly out and it fitted perfectly the last thing you want to be doing is talking down screws in bronze and stripping threads Add Loctite to the hub anode bolts and that's the last four to go in which will complete the unit. I hope you agree that the unit looks fantastic, we've restored the efficiency and this will be running for many more years to come. Thanks for watching East Coast Sailing and if you've enjoyed today's episode please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications to get the latest episodes. Come and join us next time as we sail to Maiden Sea to do a little bit of wine tasting.